YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, back in Total War Warhammer. Want to bring you a battle that was submitted by a uh, viewer, and he's the one playing as the dwarfs. Had a nice note that he wrote to me. It was very kind of him. Uh, seems like he's a big fan of the channel, so I appreciate you sending this in. Um, I've been trying to play some battles. My connection while I'm here on the road still is a little bit shaky. It's not real good. And I have had some interesting battles, like this one right here below this that says Dwarf Crazy. Um, I just played that one, and someone picked a very interesting counter build of the dwarves, but it's 20 minutes long, and I don't know if a lot of you would enjoy it, so I'm not showing it in that particular one, but it was basically like all missile units, two cannons, uh, a bright wizard on a pegasus, and I mean, it was just it was an interesting composition, made it very hard for the dwarves. He and I ended up fighting that to a draw, um, but this one I wanted to take a look at. This is another... Apparently this viewer who sent this in to me said he's also a big fan of the dwarfs. Um, so he's got a couple of cannons, gyrocopter, quarrelers, thunderers, look like a couple of longbeards, some miners, dwarf warriors. And basically he wanted to kind of highlight here, um, and look at the beastmen over there. <laughs> Two gorbals, malagor, cygor, minotaurs. I mean, just the kind of stuff you would expect from beastmen being able to try and take advantage of those units of theirs that can do massive damage. Um, let's take a look here. So this is a 2v2 also, and I wanted to show this because I don't get to show a lot of team battles on Total War Warhammer. Um, so that's, that's something else that I was hoping to be able to show you here. And it looks like it was played on the, uh, is this, no, 18's the normal number there. Yeah, okay. Um, so there's a steam tank, mortar, couple Reichsguard, looks like swordsmen, crossbows, demigriffs, Karl Franz there on Deathclaw. So that's just kind of the stuff we're seeing. There's an Outrider with a grenade launcher that started out here. Beastmen deployed back here with Bretonia, using the Bretonian infantry to help guard their Minotaurs. The Cygor gives them some range. That's not a bad pick, and they can spawn another Cygor because they've got Malagor the Dark Omen. Um, and there's two Cygors. So these guys now have considerable ranged ability combined with their Peasant Bowmen. There's two Paladins on a Pegasus, and then King uh, Luan Lian Kerr. Um, so definitely going to be some power there. There's a Knights of the Realm deployed up over here, and then back behind them we've got a Paladin, and wow, three Pegasus Knights there. So lots of mobility, and stuff that the uh, the, the Empire and the Dwarves are going to have to watch out for, because it can get to their artillery, they can get to their skirmishers. So definitely a potentially devastating build here, with just a little bit of infantry to hold the line, supported by Minotaurs and Gorbals and um, Cygors. Uh, I mean, it's going to make it's going to make the uh, Beastmen able to do the damage while being defended by their Bretonian um, teammate. The cannons are firing at the Pegasus Knights. It's a good choice. They fly way up in the air. This gives the cannons the ability to use their long range, and it's harder for flying units, obviously, to find any cover because they can't use the terrain uh, to gain any cover. So you see here that the uh, Pegasus Knights taking a pretty fair amount of damage and being forced to retreat. Um, so And that's definitely a plus for Team Dwarf for the Dwarvo Empire Alliance, we'll call it that. <laughs> Dwarvo Empire. That's pretty ridiculous. No, yeah, I've been playing some games. I've been having a hard time getting battles that um, are just viewable. Like that last one, I mean, I thought about showing you all the crazy battle with the dwarves. I can. It's 20 minutes, and it comes to a draw. I just don't want to show you something that you all think is boring. I mean, it was definitely an interesting Empire counterpick to the dwarves. Not that the Empire doesn't have any number of counterpicks to the dwarves. Um, and, oh, and I, and I should probably touch on it here. I am fast-forwarding because I want to try and get down to the action here in this replay. But uh, the main reason one of the, the viewers sent this in is because he was saying that he likes a couple of the, the buffs that the, uh, the dwarves have received in this most recent patch. And they have. Um, uh, a couple of the buffs that they've received is their runesmith and um, also Thorgrim being able to boost the melee attack and some, a couple of the other stats of nearby units. So the runesmith combined with uh, the uh, ability of Thorgrim, you see here these dwarf warriors all of a sudden have 39 defense and attack, which is considerably better than where they were. The long birds, uh, birds, long birds, long beards sitting at 46. Um, so you, you can give substantial boost. And then, of course, the runesmith has the rune of negation. So he can negate a, quite a lot of damage for brief periods of time. So like if you're about to get a, a bunch of nasty charges or stuff like that. Look at the Empire uh, here supporting the flank. So this this will be good. Got the Quarrelers and other units. They're basically ready to face off against the Paladins who are chasing Gyrocopters. So the Gyrocopters being used as bait, obviously, to try and pull the Paladins in closer. And if the Paladins fall for it, then they will not be making a smart move. <laughs> we should hide the foliage. And I'm going to lock it, too. So there we go. That way, when I'm showing the replay, the foliage will go away while we're zoomed in. Um, so, yeah. 
Anyway, it's looking pretty good. Hey, check it out. I turned on the telestration tools to kind of be like the old Rome 2 battles where I can draw on the battlefield, so that, that'll be nice. Um, you can do that by modding the preference script. So, like, if you go into your Warhammer file folder in Windows and you find the one that says scripts, um, you can go in there in the preference script and you can turn on the debug camera, which lets you go as high up or as far down as you want like that. And you can also turn on the telestration tools. And there's a bunch of other things that are kind of handy to turn in there. So yeah, they're keeping the flying units from the uh, Empire away, and it's uh, from the uh, Bre Bretonian player away, and they're able to move up this mortar. And then again, the cannons here are able to fire, and they're they're the Cygor has the range to keep up with these guys. But you're noticing here that the Cygor is getting staggered, and the cannon has a bonus versus large, which the Cygor I would assume counts as large, and it's able to um, it's able to stagger the Cygors a fair bit. When there's hills on a map, it causes weird things with the camera. Let's see how accurate the Cygors are firing back at the uh, cannons. Because... Woo! Yikes. That was a pretty nasty hit by the Cygor. Cygor's going to fire pretty slow, though. Let's see the damage being done to the Cygors. Uh, one of them taking some pretty significant... Both of them taking pretty significant damage. So the cannons appear to be standing off with the Cygor, and they're doing it at a much cheaper cost. One Cygor is 1600 so it costs the same as both cannons put together. And the um, the Beastmen will have had to pay 16 wins of magic to spawn the other Cygor. Though I don't disagree with their option of spawning the Cygor. A couple of solid hits with the Cygor can do a ton of damage to key units on the battlefield. And they are a pretty nice mobile artillery platform. But like I said, you can see them getting staggered, and over and over again the Cygor is having to get up off the ground and reposition itself, and of course this is going to further limit their uh, their uh, capability. So right there again, you can see the staggering effect happening. Let's watch the uh, incoming giant rock from the Cygor, see if it scores a hit. Ouch, man, a bunch of smushed stunties right there. The green skins would have approved. So yeah, the gyrocopters here being used to kind of play some cat and mouse with Leon Kerr. Not much they can really do to him because he has regenerate, so I mean he's a pretty good unit to be playing cat and mouse and baiting some ammo off the giant. Honestly I might just park Leon Kerr in front of these guys for a while and try and soak up some of their ammo because he can then just go off and regenerate. Um, so I mean that would that would be a fairly good way to drag ammo off. So a bit of a standoff here, which is weird seeing the Beastmen kind of in standoff mode. Normally they just come in like a wrecking bull and uh, come straight in. Which, by the way, thanks for the suggestions on my Beastmen video about what to call the little the little roll move the Gore Bull does. Like we got Cannon Bull. That one was pretty good. Um, we had the Death Roll. Oh, there was a ton of good names. I can't even remember them all right now, which is making me sad because you all suggested a bunch of really cool names. If you haven't gone to that video, it's, I think it's Beastmen Part 3. It's pretty funny. Um... Basically, my, my gore bulls are constantly like doing this little somersault move when they go into combat, and I ask people to help name it, and we got some really good suggestions. Yeah, this Cygor is getting wrecked by the cannons, so definitely a, a nice trade for the cannons, for the dwarf player. I mean, but the Cygor has scored some hits, and done, they've done some damage. 35 kills there, 23, not enough to pay for themselves, but I mean, just a few hits can cause damage. So again, this is why I was telling you that these guys definitely can have a purpose on the battlefield miss there miss there I mean they're not terribly accurate looks like the mortars are firing now these uh, gyrocopters better watch out the the griffin can't catch them easily but these pegasus knights can definitely keep up they can get close at least the speed on the gyrocopters is the same as the pegasus but if they get a charge animation they'll do it here we got a gorbel with two minotaurs with shields and then I want to say there's there should be another gore bull somewhere in the field. Here he is with one more minotaur with shields. They are also considered large units. So the, and again the cannon has a bonus versus large. So the dwarf player was counting on that. Now the the danger can be whether or not the beastman player were, were to just barrel through the main dwarf line with minotaurs and gore bulls and then just go straight at the cannons, which they very well could do. Um, so that's something you're gonna have to be aware of. So there is definitely a risk. Let's watch these. Um, Let's watch these mortar shots. That was a pretty sweet shot right there. That landed right in the middle of those beastmen. The mortar's not very accurate. It's a very cool sounding unit, and it looks cool, though. So it's one that I like to use in campaign kind of more for fun. There goes another rock out from the Cygor, and let's watch these mortars come in, get a little bit more sweet cinematic action in this battle. Ooh. Nasty hit there on the uh, Ungor Spearman with shields, so not the most high-value target. 
You can see the spread on the mortars is pretty wide. There's a f was there a fight going on here? Pegasus Knights going after the Outriders with grenade launchers. Outriders cannot attack flying units, so well the grenade launchers can't. So that's something to be aware of there. Wonder if he. Okay, man, those Ungor spearmen are getting wailed on by the the mortar. And again, not a high value target, but um, still uh, pretty cool. Cygors are getting hit by the cannon again. This one's about to drop entirely. I mean, the cannon's not totally accurate there either. You can see them missing some shots. Quite a long standoff in this battle before we're going to get down to the meat of the action here. Woo! Those Ungor spears, man. They have eaten some some pretty brutal shots from the uh, the mortar. That Cygor just took one. He's gonna he's gonna act like a, a professional soccer player there and, and act more injured than he really is. Sorry, I know I probably have a bunch of European and, and South American, Central American fans. Well, pretty much everywhere in the world that's not America, uh, mad at me for poking fun at soccer. But come on, even you all who like it, or sorry, I'll call it football because I know a lot of you will get mad at me poking fun at football. Uh, but I, I know a lot of you will will give me a hard time. But I, I like watching it too. But it's just kind of funny because the players do get. The, pretty dramatic sometimes so both both cygors are dead check it out this ungor spear herd routes because of their poor leadership they've been hit so many times by the um by the mortar and it looks like the um beast men in concert with their bretonian allies here setting up a run on the flank which is a pretty nice move they could use the cover of this hill to bring in an attack we got the gyrocopters pushing forward but they're going to be pushed back immediately by the pegasus knights who would definitely melt the gyrocopter in melee but they're they're smart enough to not get pulled in here towards the quarrelers too much they went a little bit forward but i mean the quarrelers definitely a nice um counter as long as they can keep themselves from getting just bum rushed the quarrelers could do a ton of damage to pegasus knights so but this this main line here for bretonia not moving up i'm definitely thinking that they should be trying to pressure the dwarf front line and the empire front line so that this flanking maneuver will be more dangerous so i, I think that you know if you're going to be trying something again like this you push you push here in the center towards the enemy main line so that this flanking maneuver uh, is able to come in here and, and like I said it's not going to be the sole focus right now if it attacks it's going to be the sole focus for the uh, the defenders here this little death squad here um, could be very handy at trying to tie down uh, Franz on his griffin so that he can't support the battle elsewhere and then you got one more pegasus knight here I'm thinking if the if the beastmen are able to land a good charge here, the Pegasus Knights need to swoop in, land down here, and start wiping out Thunderers. The Demigriff Knights with Halberds, though, are a big problem. Um, they have a bonus versus large, and they're going to have to be dealt with. So let's see what happens. Here comes the, the Wrecking Bull. He's the first one into combat, not surprisingly. And here comes the Minotaurs trying to get into combat, too. So Gorbull doing a lot of damage. Minotaurs coming in here doing the, the little death roll cannon bull move. So lots of uh, nasty charges coming in here. The runesmith is using his uh, negation uh, to help buff. Uh, or no, we got stand your ground out here. I don't see the negation ruin yet, uh, but it could be used. Here comes the Pegasus Knights, as I suspected they might be used, coming in in a rear charge. Demigriff Knights with Halberds did not singularly focus. Here comes a Bestigor herd and Malagor. And then over here, though, again, there's no pressure at all from the remainder of the Bretonian forces on this flank, which is kind of rough. Of course, the steam tank would jack them up. Outriders got destroyed. The Beastmen attack on this flank is doing some damage. Um, the, uh, the Pegasus Knight's pretty quickly being taken out of the fight. Um, so, yeah, it, it's going to be pretty rough. The, the Dwarves are going to be able to withstand quite a bit of punishment here. I don't know what the heck that was. So some kind of spell. I think it was like uh, a spell from Malagor. It didn't. It didn't do too much there. The dwarves have some magic resistance. So, although the Minotaurs um, get a really nice charge, you can see that they've done a bunch of damage. There's, without having that pressure here, there was just too many units being able to be focused on the uh, the flank maneuver that the uh, these guys brought in. 26 kills on Gorbel. Like I said, Min Minotaur's getting a respectable number of kills considering how many dwarves they're up against. There's 44 kills on this Gorbel, so again, doing a very nice job. Here comes some Reichsguard. They're going to help. Well, I thought they were going to come in here and help support. Instead, they turn around and they go into these uh, Knights of the Realm. 
So the Reich's Guard ought to be pretty well there versus the Knights of the Realm, I would think. Oh yeah, because they got the charge. They're doing very well. The Bretonian units over here, uh, Empire Knights helping to clean up a Paladin. Uh, the Steam Tank is not going to be easily damaged by anything remaining. Um, and the, uh, the Beastmen rush over here is just down to Gore Bulls, basically. And the two Gore Bulls can do some damage for sure, but un unsupported, they will eventually get run out of here. So you can see the one Gore Bull here, 40, uh, 48 kills. Where did the other go? There was another... Okay, he's kind of he's swinging around from behind here. So we got another Gore Bull coming in from behind. But with with Thorgrim around, I mean, even with healing potions, uh, the Gore Bulls might be might be limited in their effectiveness. But I mean, he's he's racking up some kills. He's 51 kills. Empire uh, Reichsguard over here getting surrounded by uh, pole arms, and then the peasant archers giving some support. Some swordsmen being sent down to get into that engagement. Uh, some more swordsmen there. A few dwarf units being held in reserve. Some units out here that have regrouped and not been brought back into combat. That second Gorbul is actually out here just completely, like, completely disemboweling these regrouped um, uh, quarrelers. It definitely could be useful down here. This Gorbul still, still racking up kills, 54. I don't know if he's used his healing potion yet. But again, you can see that the dwarves are going to be well buffed in combat by the presence of Thorgrim. Uh, we got another spell there from Malagor the Dark Omen. So I didn't, I can't exactly catch the spell because it kind of happens quickly. And here comes Gorbel after some of these quarrelers. He's probably going to do his little, ooh, nasty charge there. Gorbel comes in. Yeah, and I apologize the frame rates aren't all that great. This is on my laptop. Um, even when I down the graphics quite a bit, for whatever reason on the laptop, like I, I don't get very good frame rates with this many units on the screen. So Gorbul is going to be racking up some kills here. But, I mean, there's just too few beast units left on here. And <laughs> this Gorbul over here is routed just due to damage done. Again, I don't know if it's used its healing potion yet. If it hasn't, it was definitely too late in using it. So the dwarves are going to come out. I mean, a lot of damage done to the dwarves over here. They were able to hold out with the support of other units. This Gorbul is going to get overwhelmed back here just kind of being alone. Definitely doing some great damage to all these kind of squishy units back here. But this, the steam tank left for the Empire is a huge problem. It causes terror. It's got a cannon. The steam gun has, uh, well, I mean, they nerfed the ammo on it a little bit. The Empire player definitely has some, some units that they could be swinging into this fight that um, they're just not able to uh, micro properly right now, I guess. Yeah, this Gorbul is probably going to go off the map altogether. Thorgrim is actually getting killed here by a couple of uh, paladins. So, yeah, Thorgrim gets taken out, so that's pretty rough for the dwarves. They still have the runesmith, and dwarves have pretty high leadership, but that's that's still a, an unfortunate loss for the dwarves. Here, the combination of um, cannons. You can see the cannons just going ahead and firing into the fight, doing a really good job of knocking the Gorbul down. He's so large that the cannons are, and other units that are missile units can fire at him while he's in combat and they can hit him fairly reliably, so able to drive the Gorbul out of here. See, he's taking more cannon shots. The Demigriffs with Halberds are obviously going to be a great counter to something like a Gorbul. So in this case, it definitely looks like it's wrapping up in favor of the uh, Dwarvo Empire Alliance. Um, so yeah, Leon Kerr, he's sustained a lot of damage. He can regenerate, but it takes time, and the, uh, the tides are turning against um, the the Beastmen Bretonian combination here. So it's a fun battle to watch. Hope you all enjoyed this one. I definitely appreciate the viewer uh, who sent it in, and I'm glad you enjoy the videos. Hope you're excited to see your video up here. It's always fun for me to get to show some of your videos. Obviously, I like playing my own battles too, and a lot of people like to watch me play. But like I said, it's been kind of difficult out here on the road, so this is always a fun way to try and catch up a little bit with what you all are trying to send me. Let's just take a look at kills here. Really nice kills on the cannons and picking up three chevrons each. Um, so definitely proving their value here where they have a lot of high value targets to shoot. Gorbuls and Minotaurs all getting a lot of kills. There just wasn't enough beastmen in a coordinated enough attack. Um, I think buying the Saigor was probably a mistake because you can get a whole lot of trash infantry for um, 1600 gold. And all that trash infantry can be used to tie down the dwarves so that the Gorbuls and the Minotaurs are even more devastating. So you would send in a flank of the trashy infantry supported by maybe one Gorbul just to help them out with leadership. And then you can um, swing the Minotaurs and another Gorbul around the flanks even further. 
and uh, you should be able to do a lot of damage. So like Ungor Spear and Gore Herds, all those kind of things are, are relatively cheap, and you can get several of them for the cost of a Saigor. So I think that would have definitely made the Beastmen army a little more dangerous. Obviously, Devolve would have made them more dangerous. I heard Devolve was supposed to be hot, hot fixed, though. I haven't gotten a chance to check out all the news. Uh, let's check out the Empire player here and see what did well for him. These Reichsguard racking up 87 kills. Cannons and the Steam Tank, of course, because of their long-range gun, both doing very well. So the long-range here... Uh, definitely playing a role. Uh, trebuchets are relatively affordable and could have potentially been useful for Bretonia here. But Bretonia spent a lot of its money on the uh, the flying units, which definitely can be handy at breaking up like dwarf artillery. Um, so certainly can understand why they made some of the picks they did. But I mean, air superiority against the Empire is pretty easy with Bretonia. I mean, well, I say that now that you can have multiple amber wizards with multiple feral manticores maybe not so much so i mean i don't know if that's what bretonia expected but i mean used to it was pretty easy for bretonia to take air superiority against anybody without having to spend too terribly much but uh like i said i thought it was a fun battle definitely appreciate jwing 90 here for sending that in appreciate him for uh, watching the videos hope you all enjoyed it tell me what you think down in the comments what changes would you have made maybe to the army builds or uh, anything like that and i will see you all soon